This episode is brought to you by VPP Simplified. Now you can get element by element tracking and guidance for your VPP journey. Every aspect of the VPP requirements in one easy to use interactive spreadsheet. Achieving VPP star status can be tough, but understanding what it takes to get there can be simplified. Go to vppsimplified.com for more information. Welcome to the Safety Pro Podcast, where we help you manage workplace safety one episode at a time. And now, your very own Safety Pro, Blaine J. Hoffman. Welcome to another episode of the Safety Pro Podcast. In this episode, I want to talk about safety inspections and safety audits, mainly what the difference between the two happened to be, because recently I was having a conversation talking with the folks at iReport Source about their inspection tool that they offer uh, in their app and whether some inspections are actually audits and whether some audits are actually inspections. And it was a great conversation and I thought it would make a great topic. And what we were doing is, you know, just talking about iReport Source improving some of the inspections that are available in their inspection app and their development of, you know, audits going forward. And we had this discussion about why it's important. Those are two different words, and they're often interchanged and used, in my opinion, uh, getting on my safety soapbox here, they're used improperly, and there's a reason why. Some of this is going to be inside baseball, right? It's I'm talking to safety people now uh, on this part of this, and then I'm going to give you some tips and some tools to help you conduct better audits and inspections. But let, let's start with the definition of each one. An inspection is a physical check for acceptable conditions conducted at the direction of regulatory requirements, guidelines, policies, or procedures, things like that. These would be outlined in your overall, you know, safety manual or as a part of a safety management system. Again, an inspection is a physical check for acceptable conditions. An audit is an independent review of the effectiveness, implementation, and compliance with established regulatory requirements, guidelines, policies, procedures, etc. That is outlined in your overall safety manual or as part of a safety management system. And, and it's important to note that independent in the sense of an audit, independent does not necessarily mean from an outside organization. Independence means not being responsible for the activity being audited or free from bias or conflict of interest. This means that you cannot audit your own work. Okay, think of an inspection as a specific physical check to see if a tool, vehicle, or machine is in safe working condition, like a forklift inspection. Before each shift, operators are required to conduct an inspection to ensure that it is in safe condition, or a ladder inspection, a physical check for defects to ensure that the ladder meets minimum requirements per OSHA or company policies before being used. Now, for inspections, it's always a good idea to provide adequate checklists to ensure consistency of inspections and to allow for the development of trends going forward so that you can look for areas of improvement during any potential audits that you will do later on. I think you kind of see how this is unfolding here. And that's where something like iReport Source comes in handy when you conduct audits consistently using you know, adequate checklists and enter this information into a system, you can query that system. And we'll talk a little bit about how you do that during an audit later. Now, the audit piece, that's a review to see if inspections are being done and to check the quality of the inspection results. Or inspections are tactical, audits are strategic. It's another way to put it. So, most folks focus on the tactical activity of performing inspections. They have the checklists, the cards, things like that. Now, our industry, we really need to place more emphasis on the strategic review of safety as well. 
I would encourage you to go one step further and apply a management system approach to these types of activities. To help illustrate the importance of this, I will use the ANSI Z10 standard for occupational safety and health management systems as an example. Now the OHSMS cycle ANSI lays out involves an initial planning process and implementation of the safety management system followed by a process for checking the performance of these activities and taking appropriate corrective actions. The next step involves a management review of the system for suitability, adequacy, and effectiveness against its policy and this ANSI standard. Now at a high level, this is an audit of your occupational safety and health management system. It's worth noting that ANSI, the Z10, it focuses primarily on the strategic levels of policy and the processes to ensure that the policy is effectively carried out. The standard does not provide detailed procedures, job instructions, or documentation mechanisms like inspection checklists. Each organization has to design these according to their needs, and ANSI acknowledges this. What ANSI's focus is in this standard is sort of that high-level strategic overview. So if you if you have inspections and you're doing inspections, one, automate those. Get an app, use a service like iReport Source, or I, you know, research it on your own. But I'm telling you, you know, they make it easy for you to do. But do something to automate and get a digital solution for this, okay? Number one, because it's going to make this next step a whole lot easier, okay? And I'll get into what that means. In a management system approach, there's an emphasis on continual improvement and systematically eliminating the underlying or root causes of deficiencies. For example, if an inspection finds that there's the machines that are unguarded, not only would the unguarded machines be fixed, there would also be a systematic process in place to discover and eliminate the underlying reason for the deficiency. This process might then lead to the goal of replacing the guards with more effective designs or the replacement of the machines themselves so the hazard is eliminated. It's an overall root cause analysis and systemic improvement of the workplace through design. This systematic approach seeks long-term solutions rather than sort of this one-time fix. So if you have, you know, 120 machines throughout your production facility and half of them are of a particular style, okay, and design, and you find a flaw or something on one particular machine, a lot of folks will say, okay, well, th this is the operator doing this, stop taking this off, when you could take a step back and go, how do we make it easier for the operator to do their job and also design better, safer machines? And maybe you need to change half of the machines on the shop floor as a result of, this one inspection finding. Now, to see if all of this is being done effectively, right, the root cause analysis and looking at the findings that the inspections are producing, an audit has to take place. You would review how many inspections are being done. So are operators or employees doing the number of inspections that are required? You can use a simple check for this. You could see that out of 25 weekly inspections that are required, only 18 of them were turned in last week. So who missed their inspection and why? You can, you can go and find that problem and fix that, that underlying problem. It's a great metric to use, by the way, just our sort of what's our completion rate for our inspections, right? The total number of inspections that result in findings. You can look at that trend. What about the number of findings that actually result in root cause analysis and corrective action or preventative actions, uh, kappa, you know, kappa findings versus coaching, you know, verbal coaching or warnings or discipline even, you know, is being issued. You know, we want to lean more on focus on the process, not the person when we, when we look at these things. You can use an automated system to do this. You can use you can use spreadsheets. You've probably heard me rail against spreadsheets. Sorry, Microsoft, but wow. I mean, if we're still using spreadsheets, we've got problems. And it's going to take you longer to get to the value-add activities in, in what we're talking about here 
as a result of having to do a lot of data diving. And um, we want to avoid that as much as possible. But whatever you do, whatever program, and I'm not pushing anything on you, but whatever process you use, does it do these things for you? Okay, now, you have checklists, you have inspections, and you're doing them, and you've got data coming in. You know, what? how do I do a comprehensive audit of the overall effectiveness of our safety and health management system? All of our written programs, training, and, and you know, the activities our employees are engaged in as a result. How do I do that? I'm going to give you three criteria you need to use to conduct an audit of any aspect of your safety and health management system. These are the three criteria you want to use, okay? I call them the three Ps. That's paper, people, places. So paper, look at any written programs, instructions, job instructions, policies, procedures, work instructions to determine if they are adequate enough for the areas that they address, okay? Now let's take HASCOM as an, as an example for the three Ps. In this P, paper, look at the written program to ensure that it meets the minimum OSHA requirements as well as the safety data sheets, the index of chemicals that you, that you keep on site. Uh, you want to check that and have that handy because it's going to feed into the next two Ps that we're going to cover here, okay? So does the program check all of the boxes, okay? The written program, the written manual, just that piece, right? The paper piece. When was it last reviewed? Who has access to it? Where is it stored? Things like that. People, interview workers to determine their level of understanding of the written programs, instructions, policies, and procedures. This also tells you a little bit about training effectiveness and training retention over time. The idea is to shoot for at least 10% of your population. People freak out on this one, but there's, there's some ways that you can get around this. One, you know I'm going to say it, automate this as much as possible. Do you have the ability to send out mandatory surveys, asking questions? Can you use or leverage a safety team, safety coordinators to send out some of these questionnaires and gather them back? Now, remember, you have to maintain a certain level of independence when you do this. So if you're auditing one specific department, you wouldn't want to task the supervisor of that department giving you feedback on how well that area is being ma uh, managed. So that's the sort of just a red flag for you to look out for. But however you can get this done, you need to shoot for at least 10% of the population to get any kind of real data back, meaningful data back on, on this piece, right? So people, conduct interviews. Sticking with the HASCOM example, Ask workers about chemicals in their work areas. Where are the SDSs located? What are the labeling requirements? What about spill and cleanup activities where the spill kits are kept? Do they know where the nearest eyewash station is? This is going to really give you an idea of, one, we've laid out all the requirements on paper in our written programs and instructions, and then we're going to gauge how well our people understand those requirements because that's going to get us to the third P, which is places. Go out on the job site, go out to the production floor, look for evidence that the written programs, instructions, policies, procedures are being followed. Again, for HASCOM, look for labels. Are they worn, missing? Are drums even labeled? Are SDS books up to date? Are they in the proper location per our requirements? What about spill kits? Are the emergency eyewashes and showers blocked? Are they accessible? Are they being checked? Uh, so this kind of gives you an idea, a, a really good, a complete picture of the overall effectiveness of this aspect of your safety health management system. Paper, people, places. You can clearly see the benefits of these three Ps when auditing your safety management system. Always extend your audit across all three Ps. This will ensure you have done a proper and thorough audit. I wanted to talk about the difference between an inspection and an audit because it is very important. I come across safety professionals all the time that say, hey, did you do your weekly audit? And I look at the paper, the checklist, and it's 
well, this isn't an audit. This is an inspection. This is a housekeeping inspection. And this is going to prompt workers to inspect their area for housekeeping issues and get those things fixed. And what you're doing when you do an audit is you're looking at, you're taking a step back, more strategic view of how many housekeeping inspections were completed in this period of time by the entire company or this entire department. And what were the results? And then you can go and, and test that. You could do your own inspection as part of your audit. This gets crazy. So let's say you're doing an audit of the housekeeping inspection. And the audit is to determine the effectiveness of the inspections, housekeeping training that's conducted, and the employee's understanding of how to perform those. That third P, places, you're going to go and look and you may do your own checklist and say and check it against the last one that was done in that area. So if there's a weekly housekeeping inspection that has to be done, part of your audit of the housekeeping program might require you to go right after or as soon as practicable after an employee did a housekeeping inspection, you go and do your own inspection and you compare the results of yours with the results of theirs. Not yes, you got to get the stuff fixed if you find anything. But the comparison is more strategic. Why is it you found things that the employee didn't? Or maybe some things that were found earlier are still there. So were the proper notifications made as a result of finding these? Or are they just checking the box and getting on with their work? Okay, do you see how the difference between an inspection and an audit is unfolding here? It's important because as safety professionals, we are required to conduct reviews, audits of our of different aspects of our safety and health management system. We have to do them properly. The three Ps will ensure that you cover all of your bases. It's important that you're using the right language when you say to somebody, now, the average worker may not know. They'll they'll use this language all the time. They'll or misuse these terms all the time or interchange them. Hey, did you do your forklift audit? I'm not auditing our forklifts. I'm inspecting them to make sure that they're in safe working condition. I'm going to audit the forklift program, which may include me going and watching somebody do an inspection or do one myself to see the effectiveness of the training that we've done, so on and so forth. It's very important. It's a distinction worthy of an entire podcast episode. Obviously, I felt that it was important. But, you know, when I was going back to the beginning here, when I was talking with the folks at iReport Source, this is something that they picked up on and they want to make sure that they have a clear distinction of, you know, we have an app, you know, a function within our app to allow for inspections. They didn't want to conflate the two, an audit and an inspection, and confuse their subscribers. It was very pragmatic of them to be thinking about this. And I found it interesting, an interesting conversation that I had with them. And if you get a chance, check out iReportSource.com to get an idea of, of what they offer. But again, I, I can't stress this enough. The importance of automating some of this, making it easy for your employees to perform inspections, making it easy. If they have to walk somewhere, if they just think of lean manufacturing or lean construction, doesn't matter, lean, right? Reducing waste, number of steps in a process that are non-value add. I'm going to make an operator or an employee walk over to a particular area of the plant or the job site, grab a paper, go back over to where their job is con- is performed or their work area, make them fill this thing out and write some things down, then maybe even take photos of something with their phone, okay? And so now I've got another tool that, that they've used. Then they have to text or email the photo and then label it properly and say, hey, for the inspection I'm doing on this date and time at this area or this job, use these photos for reference. So now that goes out in, you know, in one communication medium that goes, gets sent out via email or text. Then they have to walk back, turn the completed paper checklist back in, then go back to their job. And then somebody has to collect that along with all the others that people turn in. And then you have to go through them and then you have to say, oh, well, they made a note about an email that they sent. So now I've got to go to my email and look for 
you know, the email from that individual with the photos and then try to, then I've got to put all this maybe in a spreadsheet. Look, just stop. It's, it's insane. It, if I can, if you get anything out of the safety pro podcast going forward, it is this, it is, you can make your job easier through really easy, accessible and affordable digital solutions. Again, I don't care what you use, just use something to free up all of that time and energy I just explained to you. It is not fair to your employees to make them jump through all those hoops. It gives, that's what gives safety a bad name and people roll their eyes and go, man, I spend so much time doing this. I don't have time to do uh, other. If you go back to a previous episode where I talked about integrating safety with other business processes, there, the study I referenced in that episode talked about I think it was, it was literally, it was hundreds of supervisors were interviewed. They said that it feels like, whether it's true or not, I don't know, but it feels like they spend, you know, upwards of 60% of their day, work day, working on safety tasks or items. And what they meant was this, it's so time consuming to do some of these things. If I could give you an app or, well, I'm just going to go with app because, you know, this is, that's where we are today. Everyone has a smartphone. Uh, we even provide supervisors with smartphones. But if I could give them an app that, you know, is always in their pocket and they have to do an inspection, it's that easy. Open up the app, choose your inspection, answer the questions, go look for the compliance is- issues that the question prompts you to, take a photo of something, and maybe you circle something on the photo even. and and bam, hit submit. And then what I get is on my screen, I get a complete list of who missed their inspections this week, who has yet to turn one in, or I can see, you know, what the number one finding is across our site is slips and falls. Maybe it's electrical. And that tells me where to focus my energy as a safety professional. This is the power of automating some of this reducing that the complaint that we hear about in study after study that supervisors and workers are spending so much time having to jump through all these hoops because we have antiquated outdated tools and they're pretty much analog they're offline right so to speak this is and this is what's important when you do an audit you have some of this data when you look at the paper people places you can have a lot of this information available to you. It makes your job easier and you have quick turnaround for improvements. When we talk about continuous improvement and corrective action, time is your enemy. The longer hazards persist or hazardous processes or inadequate processes are allowed to persist in the work environment, the chance of an injury or an accident increases every minute. This will help shorten that time frame. Automating a lot of these things will help you do that, okay? So I'm uh, I'm on this, you know, uh, recently, if you listen to this regularly, um, thank you. I appreciate it. If you're new, got to go back and check out the previous ep- episodes, of course, to get some context. But I'm beating this drum. This is, I'm not doing, you know, this podcast, you know, as sort of a keynote speech Uh, with each episode this you know I I rail against gurus I love the gurus I listen to them all the time myself but I'm telling you right now this podcast is focused on one thing and one thing only and that is giving you real actionable tips and information you can use right now to improve safety in your business okay and develop yourself as a safety professional like using the three p's you know giving you that information I'm not going to sit here and just tell you the the importance of doing an, a comprehensive audit and the value, and then I leave it, you know, like that. I want to give you something you can use. The other thing I'm going to continue to harp on is, as safety professionals, we need to be more efficient. We need to start moving ourselves from a position of reacting and responding to what's going on within the business to driving changes needed within the business. And professionally, what you can do is you can get ahead by automating a lot of this stuff. Okay, so Soapbox gets put away here. I hope you got something out of this episode. I want to hear if you didn't. I want to hear 
about how you conduct inspections and audits in your workplace, in your company. I'd love to share that with others, and I'd love to learn how, you know, you the challenges you face uh, doing this as well. So I'm going to ask you to do two things. One, I'm going to ask you to reach out to me on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, I found lately, uh, is where most professionals hang out. If you're not on LinkedIn, get on LinkedIn. I want you to reach out, connect with me on LinkedIn. If you enjoyed this episode, if you enjoy the podcast, leave a comment on LinkedIn. Make sure you uh, at mention uh, me or the Safety Pro Podcast. There's a Safety Pro Podcast page on LinkedIn as well. But I want you to do that, okay? I want to connect with you professionally, and I want to see you know how things are going for you, and, and we can network through LinkedIn. The other thing I would ask you to do is if you're on Apple Podcasts, leave a rank and review on Apple Podcasts. It's right there on your phone. You can just leave a review. Let others know what you like or don't like about the podcast. I'm open to criticism, constructive criticism. I trust you. I'm willing to be held accountable by all my listeners. So leave a rank and review. It helps get the podcast in front of other people that are doing searches for podcasts, but it also helps me improve. Okay. So two things. Let's connect on LinkedIn. Find me on LinkedIn. Blaine J. Hoffman, two F's, two N's on Hoffman. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, leave a rank and review. Hey, I hope you got uh, what you needed out of this episode. Check out the show notes for more details. And as always, until the next Safety Pro Podcast episode, be safe. Thank you.